Hey everyone, and welcome to the Flop House Mini for the week. I'm Dan McCoy. <laughs> I'm Stuart Wellington for the week. I'm Ellie Kale, and I love that. I love that coy way you announced it, Dan. Like, <laughs> yep. oh, we might be some naughty boys on this one. <laughs> yeah, we, we well, got a little taste of uh, Dirty D McSee right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, I don't think we've codified these, uh, the way we get into these minis the same way we have for our uh, regular episodes, so I'm just trying some shit out, you know? No, but, yeah, uh, often, it, I like it better than the previous standard, which was us reminding you to introduce us. Yeah, yeah. it's always it's always a messy, uh, messy entrance, but you know what? Uh, I'm a fiend for the drama, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, so t- uh, to explain to anyone who had the misfortune of coming in on this episode, normally uh-huh. uh, we are a podcast where we watch a bad movie and then we talk about it. That is every uh-huh. other week. We have taken to uh, doing slightly shorter, not so much recently, slightly shorter episodes and off weeks about uh, whatever strikes our fancy. But before we get into this uh, mini-sode... Elliot, I think you wanted to say something off the top. Yes, I want to say mini sewed is a combination of two words, mini from uh-huh. miniature and uh-huh. yep. sewed from uh yep. soda. Oh, <laughs> yep. it's like one of those mm-hmm. tiny bottles of soda that you get it's on a plane. It's a of mini yeah. and soda. It's where you uh, you bite the little wax top off of the little bottle and then you suck the delicious soda out mm-hmm. of the soda exactly. bottle, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I wanted to say. Also, in addition to that, I wanted to mention that, hey, we're currently in the midst of a kind of cool, casual, low-intensity, extra-long, max-fun pledge drive. That's right, everybody. We're just kicking back, taking it easy, and asking you to take a moment to support the podcasts and podcast network that you love. We are always grateful for our members. Maximum members are literally the people who give us the ability to keep the show going, uh, who make it worthwhile in terms of time, in terms of effort, in terms of energy, and help keep the lights on, even though right before we started recording, one of Dan's lights went off disastrously so oh my god i can't believe you brought that up on the show <laughs> i say, guys so, so I, embarrassing. God, he looks like such an idiot <laughs> no secret idiot cast I on am. this one <laughs> what a moron with his lights that don't work they don't stay yeah. on anyway uh this is all about helping us make this show but uh because i shouldn't have said but yet because max fun is audience supported most of our money that we make from the show the vast majority of it comes from you the members uh, and that means that we're not beholden to some big corporation that tells us what we can and can't talk about. No, we get to do the shows that we want to do, and it's all thanks to you, so we really appreciate it. We know that this is a difficult time. It is for all of us, uh, and that means that it might not be the easiest time to make a contribution to join or to raise your membership level, but if you can, we'd really appreciate it because it really helps us out. And keeps the wolf away from our door. Oh, the man. wolf is getting closer. Oh no! Uh-huh. Anyway, I, it, we had to pay a lot for that sound effect. So again, if you could uh, become a member, that'd yeah. be great. Uh, you just yep. go to maximumfun.org/join and choose a monthly amount that's comfortable for you. It could be as low as five dollars a month, maybe ten dollars a month, or if you're already giving that and you feel like now's the time that you feel comfortable upgrading, that you can afford it, and we've been doing a better job than before, and so you think we deserve it, which would... That's I, certainly not going to be the case. I mean, we are certainly doing more of a job. I don't know if it's a better mm. job. Yeah, uh, Then you can fair. upgrade as high as 20 35 even even $100 per month or more. It's about what works for you. Mm-hmm. This is something that, again... You don't need to do it. It just helps us out. And it's thanks to your support that we can keep making this the show that it is and bring it to you now pretty much weekly. Uh, so thank you very much. We'll be, Dan will be back later to tell you about some of the things <laughs> Wait, you might we, get in return. <laughs> am I going somewhere before that, yeah. though? Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Dan has to go fix his light. Which <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's in. It's yeah. working. I Guys, in case you're worried about me, I'm doing fine. I kicked my power strip. Don't. Send me light bulbs, as I know that the rabid listener wants to do. Like, Dan needs light bulbs, you scream to yourself. Uh, mm-hmm, and you yeah. rush to the, the the nearest mailbox on the street, and you try to shove light bulbs into it. And that's not a... You can't do that anymore. No, they don't have that little door you pull down. They don't have the door. Now it's, it's just, just a slots. slot. Yeah. yeah. So you're just breaking a bunch of light bulbs, and now you've got a bloody hand. And that doesn't uh, help anyone. Not in no, these no. times. No, like, better... Back when- Back when people were doing that with mangoes, it was messy, but it wasn't <laughs> <What>? dangerous. 
Because they heard how much you love mangoes. Uh, I think that's a pretty sweaty way to bring mangoes into the conversation. But uh, No, he's not sweating at all. He's looking cool as a cucumber Mm -hmm. over this Skype call. Uh, So that's MaximumFun.org slash join. Uh, We'll be back to ask you for money again later in the show. Now, turning to sports in high school (laughs) sports news. There weren't any right now. It's the summer, and also there's a pandemic. So instead, uh-huh. let's imagine what the high school sports would be like if they were happening right now. Doodly 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 doodly. <laughs> now, Dan, go into your famous high school sports routine. Hey, pass that over here. <laughs> uh. Yeah, sure. What game are we playing? <laughs> I need the ball for the Hey, sport. forget about it. <laughs> here we are here we are in lawrence kansas playing high school football we're as always we're doing it with tri-state area accents all my life i wanted to be a football guy <laughs> that's that's the term right for as long as i can remember so i even fucked up the joke anyway uh so no, that, uh, and then he goes, then he goes, he gives him money he goes you got tackled and you didn't say nothing good job good on you good on you you did good mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so that's from what, the that's from Mark Scorsese's movie. That's Mark Scorsese's movie, Footfellas. <laughs> what what if that was what happened? If like someone got tackled in football, the opposing team drags you off somewhere <laughs> yeah. and interrogates you. Yeah. <laughs> now now uh, I'm going to constantly be thinking about shouting at Martin Scorsese. Hey Marty, Footfellas, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? Sure. Kundun was the one that he he was yep, saying. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, I, I think that's they're in. Interrogate- I, I think about that line like once a day. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is that from? That's from The Sopranos. It's from The Sopranos. Oh, okay. Uh, Christopher yeah. Michael Imperioli. He sees Martin Scorsese and he just yells out, "Kundun, I liked it." <laughs> <laughs> that is great. So, uh, Dan. So when they interrogate the football player, the other team, where they're like, "Tell us who you work for," and he's like, "Oh, the coach." <laughs> I mean, in a larger sense, the manager. <laughs> and I guess we're all kind of working for uh, NFL, just in general. Uh, wow, wait a minute. This is Woody Allen? Just wait a minute. <laughs> improvising <laughs> Come to think of it, the advertisers kind of pay our bills. So uh, uh, do, we, do, we work for, do we work for Doritos? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they get to a real crisis. They, they follow yeah. it down the line. Yeah. It's a real crisis of identity. Who do I work yep. for? <laughs> All this time, who am I? Who am I endangering my health and my mental stability for? Yeah. Is it for the coach, the owners of the team, the NFL commissioner, or Doritos? Is because it for honestly, the love of the game? If I'm honest with myself, I'm most comfortable with doing it for Doritos, <laughs> the crispity crunch, the nacho <laughs> cheesy flavor, or occasionally Cool Ranch, and the fact that it comes in such a pleasing to open bag. And to the bags, they don't have the little windows anymore, right? The old Doritos bags, no. they had little windows, so you could yeah. see how low you were getting. Do they still have those ones that are like, you know, like, uh, like plump Doritos? They're like three-dimensional what? Doritos. They're like puffed I mean, they're Doritos. Like, yeah, they're like still a triangle, but they're like puffed. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, You're asking the wrong so, person. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Let yeah. me ask. Let me ask the brothers Frito Lay. <laughs> <laughs> see if they see if they know. So, uh, as long as we're pitching products, Elliot, I think that you came uh, with a notion you might want to uh, start pitching to I us. I mean, technically, it's Elliot and Stuart. I think we both get equal cre- <laughs> okay. uh, credit on the, sure. on the screenplay. So, here's the thing. Uh, and, Stu, just feel free to jump in uh, whenever. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the Flophouse is all about movies, right? We watch them, we love them, or we don't love them. But either way, we're watching them. And at this point... It's t- it's the wa- the flop house has gone into so many different media. We're a podcast. We're a radio show. We're a book series. We're a lifetime original movie. We're a Hallmark holiday movie. We're a deodorant. Uh-huh. We're a foot soap. Oh, don't use that soap anywhere but your foot. I'm so sorry, yeah. but we have to make that clear. The lawsuit stipulated we had to make it clear. It's just for the bottom of your foot. Just the toughest most durable part of your body don't use on any of your else your skin just the bottom of your uh-huh. foot please maybe, maybe maybe we should get to the point though I yeah mean, okay so it's time for the flop house to finally work move into the world of movies that's right movies people love them like us on the flop house we love mm-hmm. them or sometimes we don't love them but either way we love them so we're here to pitch you dan 
Dan McCoy, head of oh, okay. MGM Studios, which again is McCoy, Gakoy, McCoy Studios. You named it after yourself uh, three times, but the second time you got hit on the head and you thought your name was Gakoy for a little bit. Yeah. And by that time, I'd filed the paperwork, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you had already filed the paperwork. Uh, we wanted to pitch you on The Flop House, the movie, the story of three guys. We're going to have a little wait, bit of a. Wait, wait a minute. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, yes. Sorry. I've heard of. Hot Dog the movie, but Flophouse the movie? Uh, you Sorry. haven't heard about it. You're right, because it's not a real movie yet. That's, <laughs> we, that's we, were, we were anticipating this question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, th- how this process works is we're actually bringing to you a new movie that doesn't exist yet in the hopes that you would help us produce <laughs> I'm, it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I recently had a head injury, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's, no, we're well aware. We read the story in Variety, as you called it at the time. <laughs> and the Gollywood Gaporter. <laughs> I don't know why you were in charge of renaming the magazines for that day, but the trades, we call them. So let's trade you something. Let's trade your question for an answer. Yes. Flophouse the movie. What is it? Well, we'll tell you. It's a movie, and it goes a little something like this. Okay. We all know the famous floppers, but do we know how they began? That's right. In the Flophouse, Rise of the Dawn of the Flophouse, we'll find out how these three famous podcasters really met well actually we'll find out how one of them met the other two because when the movie starts uh dan a down on his luck divorcee who just can't catch a break he's uh-huh. already he's already roommates with Stuart, a ski instructor who also doubles <laughs> as a karate teacher okay yeah. now i all right away i like uh, i see that you're diverging from um the 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 real life for what i can only assume are dramatic reasons yeah, yeah, and uh, also because Stuart really wants to communicate his new fighting form of ski rati. Uh, Stu, you want to ab- expand on that a little bit? Yeah, so ski rati involves. Uh, so, have you ever heard of skiing? First, <laughs> should I, I should bring it back? You said actually, what? I mean that's what destroyed my knee famously. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, so I've never done it since then. The key to ski rati is you have uh-huh. to get, say, uh, you get an average person, your regular Joe, like let's call him Dan, for instance. Okay. And and the trick to the martial art is you put him on some skis and just let him go down a hill, and he's going to beat the shit out of himself. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, it's a oh, self-martial okay. art. It's a self-directed martial art. Here's the thing about uh-huh. it. Perfect for quarantine. You don't need somebody else to spar with. It's yeah. all about using your opponent's force against them by letting them just roll down a hill, basically. So is this... Uh, okay, would you then refer to this as sort of like uh, a martial art that you do for self-improvement and exercise that you're doing it on your own? Or is it, do you do it this way because you hate yourself and you want to punish yourself? I mainly do it because I'm hoping to get a sponsorship and have it uh, translated into the Mortal Kombat game series. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Because I feel like that's the only way that you can beat Scorpion. Because Scorpion is this, like, revenant, he's a ninja, and I mean... Ninjas are all over the place in in Mortal Kombat. They're like falling out of the sky. They're falling out of the sky into the pit. Then you're in the pit bottom and you're battling them. Guys, um, where have the, all the ninjas gone? Because I feel like in the late '80s, early '90s, there were all these ninjas all over the place. You like you couldn't walk down the street without hitting a couple of ninjas, and now well, no ninjas. We all, we all remember in the early 2000s when the bottom fell out of the ninja market. A lot yeah. of those yep. ninjas had to get other jobs. A lot of them sadly had to be put to sleep because they were just oh, a little, no. <laughs> a little too old and injured. And a lot the ninja schools they mainly closed down. It's all in that documentary American Ninja, which is all about uh, you know the mm-hmm. last ninja school. It's located in <laughs> oh. Bakersfield, California, uh, uh-huh. in a strip mall, and they just don't get the same quality student because there's just not the same job market for ninjas anymore. Ironically. Gee. Did you guys ever go to that ninja themed restaurant in Manhattan? What you, there was such a thing? That? No, I yeah, heard about where it, but you, I never like, went. You go through like the like waiters come out of like like hidden doors and shit and they oh, that's... I I assume they like for your drink they make you lie down in a bed <laughs> and then they like pour the drink down a thread into your mouth. That so sounds you, so you drink it. Amazing. Like even without the made up stuff that sounds amazing. Like I, I it's to my great shame that, you know, I mean, now the pandemic is going on, and I can't go uh, do this. But like, I w- I've never been to what is it, Jekyll and Hyde? Is that the? Yeah. I mean, you owe it to yourself to go back in time to when you were fourteen and then go to Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> okay. But you should. I mean, is it still in in business? 
I think they're. I think yeah. Then you should go. I know I mean, Mars twenty one twelve now, is, but I mean Mars twenty one twelve is long gone. Okay. Uh, that was. I felt like that was the. That was the. Pièce de résistance of theme restaurants, where <laughs> the, you literally had to go through a little like spaceship show to get <laughs> into the dining room, and the idea was that you were on Mars the whole time. Uh, and I guess the nadir would be the Guy Fieri's American Cafe or whatever it was called, where uh-huh. the theme of it was just Guy Fieri throwing cheese sauce in your face. Now, Elliot, uh-huh. I have a I have a question. Once about... again, gotta defend Guy Fieri. Apparently, he's a really good dude. I, I, Donates I, look, a I'm lot ju- of money to charity. I'm just judging him by his restaurant. Yeah, oh, not sure. at all by his actions as a person. The, now, guy, I, look, I, the guys, the guys helping to prop up the sunglasses market by putting one, <laughs> sunglasses on the back of his head. Yeah, I, he, he's also prop, propping up the frosted tip market, which it, it went way down. Like it really, the yeah. bottom fell out of that too. Yeah, well, it's hard but, with climate change because it's hotter, so you really got to work harder to keep those tips frosted. They melt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I wanted to ask about the Mars restaurant, though. Like, was okay, there, then like, we can get back to my movie pitch. Yeah. I mean, Stuart <laughs> right. movie pitch, yeah. But I really want to get to the bottom of this Mars thing. It was it, like, conceptually, was the, it, it a deeper concept in that, like, was the idea, there are no more restaurants on Earth, on Earth. we got to go to Mars. Here's the concept, <laughs> Dan. Here's the concept. There's a restaurant on Mars, and you're going <laughs> okay. to it. That right. is the extent of the con. There's no sure. backstory. There's no reason you have to go to Mars. What was, what was the food like? I mean, because honestly. Like, tubes and shit? No, or were they just, I mean, occasionally, I, occasionally, I think there was dry ice on the plate. But it, <laughs> okay. was, it was just like. It was just, you know, food. It was not anything special. Chicken fingers. Here's my problem is, like, you know, I rarely want to leave my own neighborhood to go to a restaurant, let alone Mars. So I just, it's a flawed concept for the beginning. I I, I mean, the fact that it's been out of business for years (laughs) would also point to it being a flawed concept. uh, (laughs) (laughs) All right. So back to the. Dan's just keeping him honest, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Look, look. A defunct restaurant, that no business from me. You're just not my <laughs> cup of tea. So, so Dan and Stu are roommates. Dan's always mad that Stu's throwing these crazy ski parties, and yeah. Stu is always trying to get his pal Dan to lighten up. But then, uh oh, what should crash land into their apartment one night? But an alien spaceship, and wrapped up inside is a little a little dude from outer space whose name uh-huh. is Elliot, and he will uh-huh. not shut up. He just keeps talking. Oh, wow. uh-huh. Is this your way of getting back at E.T. the extraterrestrial? Like, you're like, okay. I, I would be you lying. You, like, if- fucking put me in the like, second build to an alien. Now I'm the alien, you jackasses. Uh-huh. To answer your question, Dan, yes, big time. Yeah. All right. Finally, now I get to be the alien. I'm the alien now, dog. Anyway, so... He, they've got to get him, Elliot the alien, who is lovable, uh-huh. and he's going to be heavily merchandised. Stuffed animals, talking dolls, lunchboxes, shitty Atari games, you name it, we're going to do it. Uh, they've got to get him to the Max Fun rocket. It's the only rocket that can get him up into space, and there's only uh-huh, one way to do yeah. that. They're uh-huh. going to have to start a podcast. But uh-huh. can they start a marginally, I would say, no, can they start a successful yet, let's be honest, Maybe third tier podcast. You know, yeah. your top yeah, tier yeah, is what, fair. like, Serial, and your second tier would be, like, um, uh... Are we talking about just listenership or quality? Both. <laughs> both. Wow. Because well, I feel like... I, the, I feel like, like this like, is no... a trap we're walking into <laughs> if you're, uh... uh... So, the... They're gonna, they're gonna have to start a podcast, but how are they gonna record it when they're on the run from government agents and a real estate developer that are looking to stop to get this alien? The government, a- oh, there's three people chasing them, or three groups. There's the government agents who want to get this alien and stick him in a secret lab so they can find out what makes him so hilarious because maybe mm-hmm. they could turn that into a military weapon. Right. How amazingly funny he is, just off the top of his head, off the cuff. How does he do it? The government wants to find out. Yeah, That's and this secret. alien, much like uh, Alf, is uh, cats are his natural enemy. I mean. Look, I mean, I mean that's eats, like saying chocolate eats. cake is my natural enemy, <laughs> yes, Dan, which it is not. I, I realized the, the, the flaw in what I was saying you as usually, I was it's, saying it. When, when we landed at Normandy, we did not proceed to eat the Nazis, Dan. It's not what you do with your enemy, usually. <laughs> but then we gained their strength. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not how it works. So the, the second group that's after them, this real estate developer who wants to turn Elliot's home planet into condos, and uh-huh. the third one's chasing after them, are this these uh, big corporate businessmen who want to turn Elliot into like uh, you know a talking doll or something? Or it's like Santa Claus the movie. I don't know what they were gonna do yeah. with the stuff that the elf gave them in Santa Claus the movie. It seems like they already know how to make toys. So I don't know what like the idea that this elf is like. Hey, 
Guess what? I'll sell you the secret of little wooden rocking horses. Oh, that people can ride? No, they're too small for that. They're just toys you push back and forth. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like the corporate espionage that we'd really need, you know? Yeah, I think I think we've talked about this before. I can't recall whether it was um, in direct relation to Santa Claus the movie, but it may have been. It is so amazing to me. The number of movies, ostensibly for children, <laughs> that take a hard left turn into corporate espionage. <laughs> like, th- like these yeah. screenwriters have been joyless adults so long that they cannot imagine any other story other than like businesses at war with one another, and yeah. think that you know small children are going to be fascinated by this. They are yeah, not. It's like in the movie Big, where they're like, you know, the best part about being an adult is getting to dance on a fucking keyboard. <laughs> I mean, he does go I mean, to board meetings in that too. Pretty. Oh, he yeah. does. Yeah, he goes to he goes to toy research and development meetings. And I thought uh, he just went to FAO Shorts and danced on that fucking keyboard with like, Robert Lozier movie, for like four hours. It'd be so <laughs> funny if they did like a kids cut of Big, and it's just the stuff kids would do. So it's like twenty five minutes long, and it's like he wakes up Big, he eats that little corn, he dances on the piano, he touches the ladies' boobs, and then suddenly he's back home again. <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh, that, that's weird, guys. Let's take a little moment here uh, to go back to the Max Fun Drive. I don't, you know, I don't want to kill anyone's momentum. I don't want to kill anyone's show. I just want to say it's the Max Fun Drive. Uh, this is the time when we come to you, hat in hand, and say, "Hey, if you've got a little money to spare, uh, we do make this thing. It takes up a lot of our time. It's a second job or a co job for many of us at this point, and." Um, and that's what makes it worth uh, worth doing to some degree. Look, would I love to hang out with my friends Stuart and Elliot without uh, maximum fun uh, monies? Sure, I would. But would I have done a show for thirteen years? Maybe not. It's hard to justify after a certain point. Yeah, and- there's definitely certain points in my life and schedule where I'm like. There wasn't some element of job to this. I might have to prioritize my other job. <laughs> yeah, and I don't make I don't I don't say that to make anyone sad. I mean, uh, I think you can tell we are all the best of friends and love one another and uh, love that we are able to do this for you. But there's also a, a little more mercenary uh, reward in it for us, and we thank you for that. We thank you. It is hard to ask you for money at this time. I have a hard time asking honestly in years where the world is doing perfectly well. But, um, you know, it is still important. We've heard from a lot of people who value the stuff that we do on Maximum Fun, particularly right now when, you know, we're spending a lot of time apart from people and hearing another human in your ears uh, may be of great comfort. Um, And so Maximum Fun membership starts at $5 a month. That will get you access to over 200 hours of bonus content, including... A lot from us. There's like an eight-part role-playing game that Stuart ran oh, with well, us. It's like it's like we threw a <laughs> yep. third job onto the second job <laughs> yeah. of doing the main uh-huh. podcast. Stuart's um, like, oh, I want to run you guys to another red adventure for the bonus content. Oh, how many chapters will this be? Uh, do you have several months free? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I mean, you guys have to get into character. We have to do <laughs> exercises. True. Yeah. I mean, uh, look, people really love these things that Stuart does uh, and he puts a lot of work <laughs> into them so I that don't want to wow. that's on my Tinder profile <laughs> I cannot badmouth them as much as I uh, is not my my bag but people really like it and I'm glad that Stuart is is doing that for us <laughs> really sell it Dan um, you're doing a great job really sell that bonus content <laughs> you're like no, I, I don't mean... like it but maybe you will <laughs> I, no I love I love the fact that it exists I just don't like Trying to anyway. Uh, if you choose to join, <laughs> like you the, wouldn't like, you wouldn't like, if if you were trying to impress like a famous person, you wouldn't be like, hey, I do a podcast, and one of the <laughs> things it, it it does is this bonus content where my friend <laughs> makes me play a role playing <laughs> game against my will. Here's the thing: if I could go into a fugue state where I don't recall doing the actual role playing, I would think these are the most amazing things in the world, and I hope that you listeners do as well um and part of the joy is that Stuart is uh has this power over us knowing that this is a fan <laughs> favorite thing that he can yeah. force us to do uh but if you choose to join ten dollars a month you can get a max fund membership card a cool pin along with your bonus content 
pin. Every I'm podcast pronouncing that correctly, has its, it is enamel pin. Pin, pin, yeah. Every yeah. podcast has its own pin. You can choose one, and the Flophouse one this time, it's got a certain rocket crocodile on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spaceman alligator, I call him. Uh, do you guys? <laughs> no, nope, that's, that's the knockoff. <laughs> obviously, we all love the Flophouse pin. Was there another pin that caught your eye? I thought the Switchblade Sisters pin was really great. That's uh, the one I was going to say. That. I love that Sawbones one that says homeopathic means pretend. Uh, For the first time, there's an iPodius pin. Never, be- oh, wow. never been done before. I mean, Ooh, cool. That would be a nice pin to get and then throw in the garbage. Right? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, the money still goes to Max Fun, so thank you for doing it. I mean, I all of the pins are great. Honestly, if I was uh, just a listener and not uh, a member of the the Max Fun network, I would have a very hard time deciding. But I impartial, not impartial. I am partial to uh-huh. ours this year. It looks really great. It's, um, it's a great one, yeah. So if you want to. Uh, you know, get those um, those uh, thank you gifts. You can go to maximumfun.org join to be slash join to become a member. Uh, maximumfun.org slash join. Thank you for reiterating that since I didn't say it that well the first time around. And uh, because it is a, a hard time, because um, it is a weird time, we just want to thank everyone out there who is in healthcare. Uh, retail, all sorts of essential jobs that are uh, continuing to make society work, no matter how much our own government seems to want it to crumble. Uh, We are thinking about you. We are grateful for everything you do. And we hope that uh, our much dumber thing that we do can divert you and we can uh, help in the only way we know how, which is to make really dumb dumb jokes are you saying but, we're not essential yeah. workers <laughs> um oh elliot i don't want to break it to you but no we are the most <laughs> inessential workers quite possibly ever <laughs> in the history of humanity <laughs> yeah and and, th- and thank you to all the protesters too oh yes yes um um but back to uh this pitch i'm on tinter hooks to see or mm-hmm. hear what happens next tinter hooks tinter hooks uh-huh. it's you mean tinter tinter hooks? hooks? Yeah, those are the hooks, hooks that. That's what the hooks that Harold Pinter uses when he needs to scale uh, the wall <laughs> of a, ca- a castle keep, mm-hmm. so he can steal away a duke's treasure. Yep, as Harold Pinter often did. <laughs> yes, he's known for <laughs> famed cat burglar Harold Pinter. <laughs> they they say they say he was so good because he was so silent. It was they the silences. The Scarlet Pinter now. <laughs> <laughs> Did they call him that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that was when I he teamed so. up with that was when he teamed up with uh, with Nell and yep. <laughs> uh, Scarlett Johansson. Uh-huh. It was it was a, it was as a band, Scarlett Pinter Nell, and they were kind of like I guess if if there's such a thing as like new wave synth garage rock, mm-hmm. like that yep. was kind of what they were into. Harold Pinter, yeah. of course, played synths. Scarlett uh-huh. Johansson was on drums, and Nell was lead singer and lead vocals, <laughs> yeah. which seems like a mistake. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what gave them their signature sound, her made-up wild child language, but it's still... Hey, guys, guys, is Harvey Harvey Keitel's wiener in Nell? Wiener? What? Isn't Harvey Keitel's wiener in that movie? What are you talking about? God, you're You're fucking right. I'm thinking of the goddamn piano. Okay. Okay. I mean, his wiener's in a lot of movies. Every movie he's been in, but usually he's got pants over it. Yeah, I mean, it's you not know, like he we've... takes it out and puts it in a jar when it's not called for in a scene. What I don't understand is why Dan is freaking out that I'm talking about wieners all of a sudden. <laughs> well, Dan's like, never I listened to no the show. Idea. I, the fucking well, show. I had no idea what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> also, I, you know, we got to save Harvey Keitel's wiener as a subject for a future mini, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, it's such sorry. a rich topic. I mean, that, I'm just I, I'm teasing people with it. Yeah. To be fair, that we we're not just funded by the pledge drive; we are funded also by sponsors. And today's sponsor is Harvey Keitel's <laughs> Mini Wieners. Mm. The next time you're holding a little tiny barbecue, throw a couple of Harvey Keitel's Mini Wieners on that itty bitty grill. Yeah, yeah, or any other kind of small, any other kind of small function you might be holding. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Or large function, we don't know. We don't yeah, know how don't your know function it's... looks once it's erect. We don't know. It could and be uh, a uh, huge uh, Harvey function. Keitel's mini wieners are the only <laughs> tiny sausage frankfurter, fully endorsed by Harvey Keitel. Reminds me of the wieners I have at home, says Harvey Keitel, <laughs> right on the package. 
So just crack open a case. Oh God, they are going to get sued wieners. for using his visage. <laughs> It's the, they do not have his image rights. It's the only hot dog yeah. whose casing replicates the leathery skin of America's favorite tough guy character actor, Harvey Keitel. Uh, this is our second penis-based uh, sponsor, by the way, after Sweet Delicious Penises or whatever it was. I mean, that was a long time ago. That was, that was a, a long, long time, time ago. ago. Yeah. yeah, that's so, a real... Flops, so the three groups of, of bad guys are after the floppers. Yeah. And they've mm-hmm. got to start this podcast. Of course, along the way, the podcast, they're traveling across the country, actually around in circles for a lot of it, because Dan's yeah. having trouble with the directions. And we're like, why was Dan tasked with dealing with this aspect of it? He gets uh, so stressed I, out when he can't read the map, and it doesn't look the way he thinks it will. I and mean, so they're, they're just going around the country. And meanwhile, people are loving this podcast that they're broadcasting from their pirate podcast van, let's call it. Uh, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. You're using alien technology to be able to broadcast the podcast live. It's a podcast broadcast from the van. Uh-huh. And so uh, there's just more and more people lining the streets with big signs that say, we love Elliot. Elliot's the best. Dan and Sue, too. But Elliot mostly. And, you know, they're going to have to eventually get past, uh-oh, what's this? Not just the federal agents. Not just the real estate developer and his army of ninjas. That's right. This is where the ninjas come in, Stuart. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Not just the big business guy and his army of, what, wives' butts? Dan, what do you want to say there, there be? Uh, wait, sorry, the business guy. So, he had, no, I, I mean, he has to be part of, like, an evil organization, right? Wives' butts is not an evil thing to... Well, maybe he brainwashes them. I don't know. Or yeah, butt washes no, them. He's there's, a whole like scene be... of, there's a whole scene of women washing their butts, and it's just for Dan. So. Okay, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I'm just saying, like, I mean, the, evil... the question of need is, I think, <laughs> unfair. I mean, it's not in Maslow's hierarchy. <laughs> yes, right. The footage of a butt wash is pretty who, low, but still. Who needs a flower? What does it. <laughs> yeah. And no. yet it's beauty and it's sweet nectar. Give us the honey and, and the <laughs> eye candy that we need. And mm-hmm. so, but now they're going to have to deal with, uh oh, Elliot's home planet is coming to get him because that's right. Elliot is a thought criminal. His crime, talking too much. Uh oh. So now it's an intergalactic chase. The uh, they're they're using technology from the Max Fun offices, which they get to. Uh, they're managed to turn the van itself into a rocket ship. It also travels through time and can go into people's dreams. And so, it's just a phantasmagoric psychedelic uh, ride through the last hour and a half or so of what I think is like a four and a half hour movie. Uh, okay. Because yeah. we're gonna call it. A TV binge of a movie. Because here's the thing. Movies, they're, they're like, what, an hour and a half, two and a half hours? People will binge, like, four, four and a hour, half hours of TV all the time. So why don't we make movies that long? Let's just do it. Let's just go for it. We'll say you're okay. binging the movie, okay? Just just, just make sure that you have enough incidents in each half hour so it feels like that movie's just a bunch of small half hours mushed together. And also now, we run credits in between every half hour, and there's a theme song for the movie that plays in between every half hour to remind you what's going on in the movie. And it, the screen makes it seem like you have the option to skip the intro, but you don't actually have that option unless you leave the theater to go to the bathroom and come back. In which case, that's that's called skipping the intro. We call that real-time intro skipping because it doesn't save you any time, but you do get to avoid the intro. And the intro is very annoying and very ear- earworm catchy, so you are going to want to hit those bathroom breaks. Uh-huh. Now, I so I feel like I understand a lot about the plot of the movie right now but i have a cup i mean so you know like they're they're on the run businessmen are the antagonists your fellow aliens are the antagonists there are a few character questions yeah i, yeah, I just ask. told you all that stuff i don't know why you're pitching the movie back to me I, the unless character it's, yeah stuff let's do is, it it's great i love it let's um no 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 i wonder all right there's two key questions i have here number one okay what about them being podcasters sort of like we like informs and reflects upon the characters. Why are these characters podcasters? And number two, oh boy, you what have are the taken network notes for arcs her. over the course of this movie. That's what I, because characters king. You now, know, as a writer myself, uh, you know, it all comes and they're from welcome. Character. Yeah, characters, and especially king character, the king of all. Oh, characters. you're welcome. <laughs> so, Wait, is king character related to King Cruel, the alligator, uh, like? boxer punching guy who fights uh, donkey kong no no king cruel <laughs> king character king koopa and every other king are not what about king real... hippo no they're just kings they also just so a boxing guy they just all yeah. have the same title they they are in the same place of their individual nation states or fiefdoms uh usually 
having the title king does not mean you're related to someone unless you are a family member of someone with the last name king. Yeah, Stephen King's son, yeah. Martin Luther King, for instance. Like, they're related because they're both <laughs> they're both named king. Mm-hmm. So back to the characters. Yeah, okay. So, Stuart, I think you you had some ideas about why they are specifically podcasters and what it is about podcasting that informs their character choices. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that they have a, uh, I don't know, they have... Well, they all have lovely voices. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we agree to that, right? The voices thing. Yeah, to a man. Yep, and they look kind of weird, so they wouldn't want to be in some kind of visual medium. Mm-hmm. And also, they all grew up listening to radio, like in Dream On, but with radio instead of TV. Right, 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 okay. right. And of course, so I like. Was- I assume that we want to like piggyback on all of that uh, the success that Alex Incorporated had. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. The, the hit sitcom about a hit podcaster. sitcom. It's been running for years, won all the Emmys, uh, mm-hmm. and people remember it. It lives on in more ways than just as mugs that are at the Max Fun offices. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, and, yeah, exactly. Alex and so, Dan, your other question: What their arcs are over the course of it? Okay, the Dan, of arcs. course. Dan will finally let down his hair eventually and have uh-huh. a have an amazing night as a party dude and uh-huh. finally realize what his life is missing, which it turns out is a small cactus plant in a little like a little pot that he can yep. take with him because then yep. he's always got a friend with him and a friend that will never run away because it's rooted into the soil. But he also doesn't have to give it very much because it only needs water like every week or so. So he finally realizes what's missing from his life, which after a wild whirlwind night and this amazing journey, he realizes he needs this little cactus plant in a pot and he can just put it on his desk uh-huh. or like put it on the counter while he's making breakfast and just talk to it. And it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. He can just yeah. say whatever he can just no, whatever abuse he wants to hurl at it. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. a cactus. It can take yeah. it. Now yeah. Stewart's arc is that he will finally, uh, meet a Kung Fu master and uh-huh. is yeah. able to use Skirati to challenge him. Uh, uh-huh. And in doing so, he manages to form his first martial arts school. And uh-huh. now he's a respected, uh-huh. And, of course, opens his first bank account. Yes, yeah. And, well, that's the thing. He turns his back on martial arts after this whole adventure because he realizes violence is not the answer. Money is the answer. And he opens a bank account and becomes mm-hmm. like a like a venture capital guy. I you mean, know. in a way, ca- uh, money is violence. But uh, And let, let me just jump in here. <laughs> I for, mean, in a very real way, yes. Wow, wow. Yeah. For, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, maybe you think. Um, and then for the Elliot character, uh, it's a pretty classic arc. You know, uh, we're dealing with a character who has some weaknesses, and his arc is but all about few. overcoming that weakness. So he begins. Uh, he begins the movie. This uh, you know, short little alien guy who talks too much, and by the end, he grows like three or four feet, and you're like, "What?" And that's his <laughs> arc. <laughs> oh, okay. wait. What am I like, Stuart? You're like, what? I like it. I think I can sell that to the people upstairs. <laughs> well, we thought you were the head of the company. It's named after you. <laughs> no, I just there, there's a. What do you mean, there's God? A family, there's a family upstairs. I kind of use just as like a barometer of what you know an average oh, okay. American yeah. wants to see in a movie. Yeah, sounding fair, board. Fair. So yeah. you're the head of a you're the head of a movie studio, but you live kind of like downstairs <laughs> from an average American family. <laughs> Well, we don't have the air rights to our studio, so this family just came in and built a house up there. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. that's not really how air rights... I mean, you do have the air what? rights over whatever Sorry. building you have. <laughs> Skype's breaking up, Elliot. I can't hear you. I can't hear your <laughs> logical objections. <laughs> so, I guess that's uh, Flophouse the movie, and uh, we've already got a, uh, a commitment from Robin, uh, the musician, uh-huh. to do the theme. Um, uh-huh. No, wait. I'm sorry. I miss I misread I misread the name. Uh, it's from Rorbin. Uh, Rorbin <laughs> yep. is not known by anybody. Not a famous musician, and uh, in fact, not a musician. It's actually a dog that I know. But <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure Rorbin will will do the theme for us. Uh, now, when you say you know him, have you been over to his house? What is, what is it? What it is to know a dog? Uh, well, that's a little personal, but, uh, you can't ever really know him because he has such multitudes, but, you yeah. know, I've walked him a couple times and we've talked about, you know, the life and uh-huh. what it's like to be and a you, dog. And, and, and you made eye contact with him when he was doing his business on the street and you were like, I, I get it. I see you. It was in that moment where I felt like I looked into his soul and uh-huh. I liked what I saw. And what I saw was the theme song for this Flophouse movie. Uh, we also, we need to attach some more talent, certainly to play the 
the head of the federal agents. I was thinking mm-hmm. probably like Lance Henriksen. And uh, to play the uh, the real estate agent, I was thinking his brother Vance Henriksen. And to play the uh, the <laughs> yeah. capitalist kind of banker, I was thinking, that's right, Dance Henriksen, which is the dance troupe Lance Henriksen started. He's no longer uh-huh. a member in it. He kind of can't move the same way he did when he was younger. Uh-huh. But he still design, he still choreographs it. And uh, Dance Henriksen will kind of like get into this giant business suit and they'll operate it almost like an enormous puppet, but dance. Uh-huh. And I think that'll yeah. be really cool and something new that the kids haven't seen yet uh, with their TikToks and their Instagrams and their catfishes and their uh-huh. uh, hush puppies yep. and their, yep. you know, mm-hmm. uh, roller discos and their uh-huh. elephants mm-hmm. and their circus yep. peanuts and their, uh-huh. you know, Polaroid photographs and their, yep. you know, uh, Birkenstock shoes and their alarm uh-huh. clocks and their, uh, uh-huh. you know, Love and Rockets comic books and their, uh-huh. their Ikea furniture, you uh-huh. know, and their Sealy Postropedic <laughs> mattresses and their uh, Buddhism and their, you know, uh, all Hebrew national be- all beef salami and their, you know, deciduous trees and, uh, you know, their peacocks and, you uh, know, uh, you know, their Tasmanian tigers and other extinct yeah. mammals, you know, their uh, tied laundry detergent, you know, and their, yeah. uh, their, uh, you know, uh, you know, early onset Alzheimer's and their, uh-huh. and their you know, co- those plastic novelty combs, yeah. the really big ones that you get at amusement uh-huh. parks and like, you know, Teddy Ruck spins, you know, uh-huh. and their earthworms yeah. and their earthworm uh-huh. gyms, uh, for uh-huh. the Sega Genesis particularly. And, yeah. you know, their Kleenexes and, you know, their Denny's and yeah. <laughs> their Denver the Last Dinosaurs and, yeah. you know, their hardwood floors, you know, and their walk-in closets and, you know, their indoor plumbing and their uh-huh. internal combustion engines, you know, and their oh, yeah. separated rights for various <laughs> merchandising and, you know, uh-huh. adaptation things. Their palm trees yeah. and their, you know, you know, dandelions yeah. and right, no, no, no. So <laughs> you, gotta, you know, it's going to be great. Well, it's going to be great when Dan goes to visit Elliot in L.A. and he walks into Elliot's office and he has his, like, chair. Jazz Palmentary and Usual Suspects <laughs> moment where he sees all the things that Elliot just talked about. <laughs> I mean, they were uh, uh, an, an, an astounding, from my perspective, an astounding series of pulls of seemingly random but very specific things, other than the fact that, uh, other than the one m- moment at which I was dabbing my forehead because I was sweating from the hot room and the laughter at the same time, and he said Kleenex. Other than yeah. that, I think it was a pretty clean. Uh, Thanks. That was a, a weak moment for me. I'm, I don't like that I said palm trees, and then I think, or I think I said deciduous trees and dandelions at the same time. I, there were uh-huh. a couple things where the links were a little too strong. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I think the yeah, kids. Yeah, and, and you mentioned Earthworm Jim, which is one of those kind of sad ones because isn't that yeah. dude like a huge asshole? Yeah, he's a real jerk. He's a he's a terrible. He's a he's well, he's a guy who I uh, don't agree with politically, and also he's. Uh, intolerant of people who are not like him. And yeah. so, yeah. But anyway, we don't have to talk about him. Okay, so instead of Earthworm Jim, pretend I said Toe Jam and Earl. So the kids Thank with you. their Toe Jam and Earls mm-hmm. and their MC, MC Scat Cats and their, yeah. you know, Jet Skis. And their Samson their, Max Hits the Roses. Samson Max Hits the Roses from LucasArts. And there's big fan men that are outside of used car dealerships. And they're enormous, yeah. enormous flags that just have like a picture of the devil and underneath it says, hey, buddy. And they're novelty. <laughs> t-shirts what? and their roller skates <laughs> and their wicker laundry hampers and <laughs> and you know their their curly wigs with lots of multicolored what? colors on it and uh-huh. yeah. they, okay. and their clown noses you know sure. and their gloves without the fingers that they can handle coins when they're selling papes on the street and you know their number two ticonderoga pencils and you uh-huh. know <laughs> okay well uh no you look you got it you got the movie, green light, sold in the room. <laughs> we did. That was me uh, putting a putting a cap on this. Uh, you know the the you know I think this is the most informative episode of the show we've ever done. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, uh, this Stuart. is one. This is definitely one of those. Uh, click on it, hold down the button, drag it over into the little <laughs> garbage bin, and hit empty <laughs> trash. Oh, no, I think I think I think you mean drag it over to the little thing that says time capsule and save it oh, for yeah, five thousand yeah. years for future generations, so yeah. they know that we had band aids and also <laughs> like uh-huh. uh, glue sticks and you know yep. paper clips. Not to mention uh-huh. Pomeranian dogs and yep. you know Hulk Hogan, and not to mm-hmm. mention you know those rubber bands that. They, they're really thin and they're really long. You know the ones I'm talking uh-huh. about. And yeah. also like little keychain flashlights. And uh-huh. not, 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 oh, not to God. mention those screens you put up on the windshield of your car so the inside God of the car doesn't it. get hot. And it looks like sunglasses. Look at yeah. it. Um, 
So hey, this Stuart. is, you know, this is the kind of thing that you, the Max Fun, <laughs> the Max Fun subscribers, the supporters of this show, you made this happen. I'd hate to say it's your fault, but it kind of is. Uh, and uh, for all you folks that are listeners, thank you so much for all the supporters. Uh, to be honest, we kind of couldn't do the show without you. Um, you, uh, you you keep us going. Um, and this is the time of year where we thank you by putting out all this amazing content like <laughs> what you just listened to. Yeah. Um, if you, so, look, yeah, if you, if you get join a chance, today, I can name more things. Ninja it's Turtles, a, it was a Benjamin real, Harrison. It was a real Fantasia on stupid themes this last <laughs> episode. <laughs> <laughs> the uh so if if you are not already a supporter uh and you're interested head over to maximumfund.org uh slash join uh pick a level that you are comfortable with um be prepared to receive some lovely gifts as well as uh the warm and fuzzy feeling of supporting art that i hope you like because we like what we make and uh we think it it's worth something so thanks uh yeah with that note um you know i think that if we don't sign off there's always the risk that elliot will keep saying things until he forgets things to say which means that we will literally be here until the heat death of the universe i mean i don't know about that i mean i guess i could talk about like altoids mints and then they got their three ring binders and their footy pajamas and their Uh swim caps there and their They've got their temporary tattoos that's just like a tiger, and uh-huh. they've got their plastic flowers, not real flowers, plastic ones, uh-huh. and they got their videos of sports bloopers, <laughs> you've got your fart sound effect CDs, and you got your Halloween sound effect CDs, of course, and of course these kids today with their clouds, and of course uh-huh. their stuffed animal rabbits, and their manhole covers, mm-hmm. and of course <laughs> their pickup trucks, and of yeah. course you got their their uh, plastic bags with the Ziploc top so you can keep things fresh inside <laughs> and, uh, you know, Rubbermaid products of all different kinds. And let's not forget the kids these days. They've got hacksaws, and then they've also got airbags. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.